All right, let's see what we got going here. Stream health is excellent, it says. Very nice. All right. All right, everyone. Boom Slang here. Back again. Hey, the second time today. What can I say? Um, so I found this box upstairs. <clears throat> and it's got an SRT uh, tag on it. So I figure, what the heck. Let's sort. So, um, I do notice... It's not on camera, but there are some older Why cards in here. Why do you start that when you're making your dinner? Uh, because I, I can eat when it's ready. Didn't yell that, by the way. Oops. Didn't yell that. Anyway, so hey, welcome. Um, and let's, uh, let's do this, all right? So, you know, like, the last couple of days, all I've been doing is going through those little boxes. Not my favorite kind of sorting to do. I like to grab the boxes that have a whole bunch of mixed up stuff in it. And, like, how am I, uh, my setup is a little bit off. Excuse me. Camera down. Camera down. Whoop, whoop. There we go. Now, put the camera back up. Sorry about that. Hope you guys don't suffer from vertigo or anything like that. Oh, that wasn't good. Alright. Try this one more time. That's a problem. Over the top. There we go. Through and down. Alright. Once again. Oops, there they are. Alright. So I have a little room though. Feeling like I'm crowded in. Slide those over there. Alright, so what do we have here? And it's just going to be blocking something. Boom. How's that? Better, I hope. Alright, so here we go. What do we have? Who do we have here? Done, Russ. More tops. Tom Pagnazzi. Dunros. Very soft. Um, 82. 81. 81 tops. Dusty Baker. And now I'm too far off screen. I'll get it right one of these days, guys. Gary Templeton. Bob Watson. Boundaries of where I'm working at up here. Score. Done rest. Bobby Gritch. Oh, let's see. So it's snowing here again. Dante Bichette. Box bottom, rough cut, 
find them off of a box. Centering is pretty close. Let's see how close they got the cut. Suck it in. Uh, you're done. There we go. So I'm going to drop Mr. McGee. Look at that. Look at that. That's like professional cut there, boys. There's no real sloppage. That's a little short, looks like. Should be a little bit more sticking out of the top, but other than that, I mean, they followed the lines, whoever cut that. So they did a good job cutting it. So far, nobody of real notoriety coming yeah. Uh, well. No, not even a fan favorite, just black. Isaac and Jaco. Hold on, guys. We're right back. I hear Carl. car out front just seems suspicious that it was out there with its engine running but of course as soon as I go to the front door it pulls away so just for the neighbor kid Frank how's it going Frank Did you download that uh, st uh, stream yard, Frank? I can switch over to that. One thing it won't allow me to do, it won't allow me to run my other program, my um, OBS. So I'd have to run straight through um, uh, YouTube. And then that car's back again, like they went around the block. Yes, I have StreamYard. I've got an account watching your stream while finishing up emails. Okay, so but you're not on StreamYard. So I can I can load it up, and then if you want to come join in, you can. How's that? While you do your emails. But yeah, I just have to. I have to. I would have to stop this stream and start a new one, but that's all right. I've just barely got into this box. 
And let's see how many people are actually here. Three people, you and two other people. So up to you. Let me know if you want to try it out. If you want, you know, it'd be your first time doing it and you'll learn how it's done. It's really actually really easy on your end. All you gotta do is click on the link that I provide you. But that would be your call. Yeah. Ready? Bucket freaking dent. Yeah, maybe I have a, a chunk more to go through. If not, we can do it next time. Yeah, it don't matter. That just you know that way you'll get your first exposure to it because you know it's like anything else. You, sometimes you just put off trying it and then you never really go back to doing it. I I mean I I did two now. I've done two times now. I've done it. So it's different. Can be fun, but depending on your connection. I mean I've seen people's where they're just so choppy and the the voice goes in and out, you know. Um, so it's one way to check out your system, see how it works too, you know. Upper deck, score, tops, tops, upper deck, tops. Lousy weather here, I don't know. How it is up there, it's snowing here again. <sighs> Not a lot of accumulation though, this time so far. A lot of it melted off, but it just kind of froze over and now it's ice on the ground. I'll be back guys. All right, guys, I'm back. Uh, dinner is served.
Jeff Airtime, what are we looking at tonight? Um, I got a box of uh, SRT box, sort box, and it's the kind we like. It's the hodgepodge. Um, Jeff, you have StreamYards? You want to go on StreamYards? We can do that. I'm trying to talk Frank into doing it too. Your dual camera setup is what is that? No, stream. No, the dual camera setup is my open broadcasting source, which is really great. OBS. Um, so with my OBS, then you just you just I don't know, put the camera at it. I don't know how well it's going to come out. So with the open broadcast source down in this uh, area well first you go over here over here right there's um this window here and you click on it it's right here actually and when i click on it the plus sign you see my cursor here and i click on the plus sign and it brings up sources and so um i would select what i wanted to do um Game capture, display capture, blah, 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 blah. And I've already done that, so I, I don't need to do it again because I have my two cameras. Oops, go away, go bye-bye. And that's what I have here, my webcam. And then I just labeled them. You see the camera, camera. They have, the, they have their pictures right here, which represents them. Video capture device would be for cameras. And if I had a third camera, I guess I could set up a third camera, you know. I'm working on shipping eBay orders right now as I listen to you. Okay, Jeff, that's cool. Um, and so that's open broadcast source allows me to put that little picture and picture up there. And it's really great. It's really nice. I like it. It took me a little while to figure that one out. And a lot of people have been doing it for years. And, you know, we're of the older generation. We're not maybe as tech savvy, but uh, we're just as, you know, um, able to figure it all out eventually so and remember on YouTube there's a video for everything right so so that's how I have them here and my game capture is um, uh, the big screen uh, behind here um, and then I can program different games and stuff like that I can just keep renaming stuff you know and then you'll have all your stuff down here. You'll have your settings. Your microphone is, you can see it, the meter going up and down on the microphone. Um, webcam, and so on. You should do a tutorial vid on using second camera for us people who are not tech savvy. I kind of am doing one right now. I've done a couple. You're right. I can do a couple more. They won't be as professional as these guys who do it all the time, but... I could I could sit down and kind of walk people through it, but this is just a quick, um, um, you know, um, a quick how-to. How's that? And so, um, yeah, I've always wanted to do two cameras, and I couldn't forget. And my, one other thing I want to do is like, I got to get. I think it's just a special wire you got to get to run two monitors. I love to run two monitors when I'm gaming and stuff like that, but right now I've only got one monitor anyway, so it doesn't matter, but, you know. So, really easy to do, and um, that's what it's all about. And this, this program that I'm using is OBS. I don't know if it'll ever show up there or not, but it's Open Broadcast Source. Whatever. OBS, you just type that in on your web browser and you'll find it open broadcast source it's a uh, little icon is like a uh, an old newsreel it's free to download and just go with it uh, and just play around with it I also um, um, you can stream you can record with this program you can you know do a lot of stuff I just do it for streaming and my my editing program I use is called a program called Shot, S H O T, Shot Cut, C U T. And um, let's see where that is. So here's my OBS. That's my OBS. 
and shot cut is right here, right above it. Shot cut is what I use for my editing. I'll open it up. So when you're when you're editing something, I don't know what you guys use for editing, but um, click on your playlist right here, which is bang right there, and then whatever video you want, you drag it from your folder wherever you have it saved in whatever folder you drag it you drop it right in here in this box boom and then it changes and it'll come over here it'll start playing here you'll have it here once you have it here then you click it you click and you drag it and you drop it down here bang and then from there you can hit this little um uh where's it at where's it at where's it at um hold on i'm looking for filters where it says filters right here little word says filters there's also one up here at the top you click on filters and it brings up a, a slew now I don't have a, a, an, anything to edit it but I would click on this and it will give me a whole bunch of options and usually when you guys see my videos my recordings um, it always has a fade in for two seconds and if there's a splice scene then I'll have it fade out and fade back in. Some guys just like to go bang, bang. You know, hey, we're back, bang. Um, I like to slow, slowly introduce people to my stuff. And then go from there, and then they all fade out. You can do time lapse with this. You can speed it up. You can slow it down. Um, all kinds of stuff. So, uh, very nice. And this is a free program, too. Shot Cut is a free program, too. Don't cost you nothing. If it's free, it's for me. And that's the way I look at it. So, I can do tutorials. I come off for the next couple of days, right? It's the weekend. I can actually, I, I can do one. If you guys, if there's a, a want out there, if some of you guys want to know, and it's good, like, I sh people should list what programs they use, because I ask people all the time, uh, what program do you use when you're, you know, do this what what hardware do you have what do you run what's your what's your video card at blah 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 blah. I feel bad I asked it took oh don't worry about it not out of my not out of my card time guys you know sometimes like going through those boxes that I did for the chippers and the jeeters yeah. it's very boring because you got to jump back and forth from YouTube see if there's actually a card in there if it's worth going through and looking, actually there is. Oh God, yeah. Hold on, hold on. Thanks, thanks, Frank, for bringing that up. Look at this, guys. So if you remember, I found two autographs from Mike Piazza in a box, right? And. get it I gave one to my boss here's the, here's another one well I went through this box looking for chippers and stuff right and what did I find but another Piazza autograph now, it's not a certified autograph or anything like that, but it's a Piazza autograph. I believe it to be real because he's from the Philly area, you know, just outside. He's from the Philly Burbs, whatever you're going to call it, you know, Phoenixville or, uh, and that area. Same area as Tommy Lasorda, uh, his, his godfather, Tommy Lasorda. So, cool. I found another one that was right inside with this, this, uh, little set. So now I'll just put them in there. But thanks for reminding me, Frank. I want to show that to you guys. Never did live streams, but I edit my videos on a Mac. Okay, using Adobe Premiere. Uh, the music in my video is from the YouTube Audio Library. So, if you guys remember some of my, my 
first videos. I have I had an intro video too, an intro song, and it was my boom slang just kind of flashing all over the screen, you know, the word boom slang just kind of twisting and turning and um, had some music to it. I got it from their library too, and that program. Like, that program was one you can just type any word in there, and it'll do it. And I type boom slang in there. Well, I kept getting strikes. Um, and I'm like, why am I getting these strikes? It came off of their library. So that's why I stopped using it. I mean, I'm like, I can't risk it. It wasn't on every video and it wasn't for the whole intro. It was like, oh, for like the last 15 seconds of this intro, you know, music and stuff, they would put a, a strike against me. Not a copyright strike, some other kind of strike. And they're like, oh, well, it doesn't really count like against you or anything. You're not going to get warnings for it, but we're letting you know that someone is claiming this. So I'm like, I get tired of people going and just claiming that it's their song or whatever. And I'm like, you know, I'm just not going to show it anymore. It came from the YouTube library. They sh YouTube should have figured this out. It was on their library of free stuff. But I just got tired of having to deal with it. So I just didn't, I took it away. I just stopped using it. Kind of stinks. You know, you, you, you want to have your own thing and um, someone decides that they don't want you to have that thing. So, um, what else? If it's free, it's yeah. That's good. that's it. That's it. Frank, yeah, you should probably do some live stream. Now, you have your nephews and stuff come in and help you out with videos too, from time to time, right? You know, I got a strike once, and it was. Because I didn't credit the composer of the song. The person who made the song has to have their credit in your description. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and and, but it wasn't even that. It wasn't even about that. It was like, like not the whole thing. It was like, oh, for, for like a 15 second or a five second blip in your thing. Because it wasn't even that long. The intro wasn't even that long. So it was just a couple seconds. It was like a five second that someone claimed it was theirs. I'm like, wait, no, that's all one song. It's not, it's not possible. But whatever, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna deal with it. I just stopped using it. It's still there. I have it saved on my PC upstairs, not on my wife's laptop, which is what I'm using. I do all my editing and recording. The people in my video are just in them. That's all. Yeah, but do you have like your nephews, right? And of course, I had the one. It was like some some dinner. We had them all chewing that gum, trying to. Uh... Didn't one girl call it? See, I don't. Again, I don't know who these who these people are. They're family members. I'm assuming, or just neighbors are trying to poison with the gum. But it didn't the one lady say you're evil? Uh, I could have swore that's what she mumbled through all the the gum that was in her mouth when she stood up. She said you're evil. Could be. Maybe I was wrong. I was wrong about John Jabs, uh, his um, Britney, when he made that um, that cardboard sled. Um, I thought Britney had a dead squirrel on her head. It turned out it was wrong there too. It was, actually was her hair. That's how the story goes. I'm still maintaining it, it was a dead squirrel, but yeah, and the people out in Western PA. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, guys, while I take a bite of this. There we go. Your your wife's cousin, okay. Wow. And you tried to kill her with gum. Should have gave her the gum first, Frank. Probably would have built her immunity to the COVID. Well, I'm glad she's all right. That's that's scary, isn't it? I'm glad she was able to kick COVID's butt. All right. So what do we got here? We got Holly. Oh, I've got a lightning bolt right down through the center of his card. You can see it really good. Look at that. Other than that, it's a fairly decent card, but my trash can's covered. Dang it. All right, put you there.
Guy's been loading up on those Pokemon cards from McDonald's. I want to think about it. I'm not opening mine. I'll open them with my granddaughters. Uh, that's it, though. The ones that I get for myself, I'm just going to sit on. Could be like uh, Sports Illustrated Kids. Years later, it could be worth something. So, whoa, I'm going to spill my burger on top of my cards. Burgers and cards. Oh, my. All right. You know what? I see these older cards in here, so I want to get to them. All right. So, here's a silver signature. Nice. Working. Oh, they're die cuts. Some, some upper deck die cuts from the upper deck SP. You know, I, I don't... Ooh, I've got a mini card here, too. Excuse me, another silver... Si oh, silver signature. Here's... Um, is this a Cracker Jacks? It is a Cracker Jacks. See the little sailor there? Cracker Jacks card. Uh, some kind of panini stamp? Yes, it is. I've seen a few of those. Um, tops. Stickers. Fernando. Another Panini, Jeff, Jeff Treadway. There's a nice foil. Um, it's Coleman. Benito with a blank back. Oh, oh my god, a blank back sticker card. Damn, the guy who took that sticker fooled me. Uh, Terry Mulholland, that's a um, Panini product. Yep. Benito again. Another blank back. There's more than one out there. And another Fernando. All right, we got some 78s sitting right here and some 77s. Put those tops away. Gary Lavelle, he lived in a town fairly close to me, Allentown, Pennsylvania. Yep, Allentown, PA. We used to go down there to go to the mall, Allentown Mall. Boom. Not the Gary's house, of course. Uh, Reggie Smith. That's a 77 tops, right? 79 tops, sorry. 78. 78. Don Gullet. 79. Not the Burger King card. Burger King made, or tops made Burger King cards from these years, too. Vic Davilio. Cubbage, miscut. <laughs> He's miscut both ways. Topsy turvy, turvy topsy. There you go. Now it fits. See his twins card. Oops. That's funny. Brian Downing. Ken Brett. Brother to George, Kevin Bell, Richie Zisk, Hal McRae, Steve Braun. Greetings, Michael. How's it going? Bronx boys. How's it going, everyone? All right. Another miscut. Seventy nine. Warren Cromarty, Bob Welch on his bets, Bob Welch again, Roger Craig, Campbell, there's a 77, right, or 76, 77, can't see without my glasses, John Denny, Charlie Moore, Mark Luke, Littell, Larry Gura, Pet Bay Free Eyes, and Twitchell. Jerry Remy, and Twitchell. 78, Doc Ellis. Mike Hargrove. How about some Gene Tennis, The Menace. Action, Cromarty again. Randy Jones. 
Eric Rasmussen giving the old freaky, freaky deaky eyeball peaky. Big bushy stash, too. Look at that stash, yo. Oh, that's when men were men back in the 70s, apparently. Hector Cruz. How are you doing? Doug Rao. Built North. Bruce Bakhti. Dave Rosello. Dennis Lamp. Bob Stanley. Rudy May. There's a Frank White with sporting a Fu Manchu. Very nice. Cardinals with Ken Boyer as their manager. And Whitey's with the Royals. Just the same old thing. Same shiat. Just different days, right? Hey, but the weekend's coming. Hey, look, we got two Ron Reeds. This one's boogered up, though. A good one and a creased, creasy creased one. See the creases? Got Tommy Hutton. Daryl Evans. Butch Hobson. Al Cowlings. Where's the Bronco? Oh, the wrong guy. It's Cowings. There we go. I just had to go there because someone said something about uh, earlier today in my stream about um, OJ doesn't like Elway and, 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 and Peyton Manning because he doesn't like slow Broncos or something. Um, Chris Chambliss. Pretty nice card. A little off center, but nice corners. Billy Buckner. Tucker Ashford. Another Chris Chambliss. Look in there. We're getting dupes. Tugger, the Tug McGraw. Larry with one R. Sorensen. Larry. Gene Richards. Steve Yeager. Pedro Barbone. Sixto Lescano. And now we have a Sixto Sanchez, right? Frank Duffy. Bombo Rivera. Steve Swisher. Gene Mock. Gura. Pepe again. Mike Bruhert. Bruhert. First time ever attempting that guy's name. Uh, I was a youngster in the 70s. Did women like those big old mustaches? Well, where do you think the term Dirty Sanchez came from? You know, they like to ride on the stachio. Mm. Did women... Well... Um, I guess it was just a thing, like, you know, you didn't shave all your body parts, you didn't shave your chest, you didn't shave your manhood. Grooming, I, let's call it grooming, because it would be a little nice, right? Grooming. You combed your hair, that was grooming. Brush your teeth, that was it. And you had them, you know, you had them, them golden hairy legs that when you got in the, 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 the pool, they would stand up and, and the girls would come by and rub your legs, you know, rub the hair on your legs. Butch Hobson, Elvis Wood, Ron Say, Mick Kelleher. The 70s were fun. How old was I? Well, yeah, I was... I graduated in 78, so, you know, I'm just uh, coming into my prime. But I had older brothers, and there was some, some stuff went down for show. 
you know, we got I got babysitter stories I could tell, but family friendly. You just tell your dad to shave his legs. No man, there you go. No manscaping in those days. Nah, there was no such thing, man. Girls, girls did like hairy chest. This, you know, spaghetti. They call it maybe spaghetti. Go to interview her. The, the stereotype of the Italians with the the big chains and the spaghetti hanging out of their chest, you know, out of their shirts and stuff. Nowadays, yeah, girls don't like that. Nowadays, girls. Nowadays, girls are real wussies. And they make their men wussies. All right. Sal Bando. Jean Mock. My wife liked my hairy chest. It's funny. When I went in for surgery. This <laughs> True story. And I usually say when, when a story is prefaced with the word, the statement, true story, probably means it's not true. But in this case, it is true. Huh. <laughs> When I went for my shoulder surgery, right? I guess the 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 nurse who was gonna, you know, shave me. I will ask Michelle next time I see her. <laughs> um, the 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 nurse came in with the little razor, right? Because I guess she saw that the spaghetti on my chest, and um, when she pulled my gown over because I was getting shoulder surgery she thought she was going to deal with dealing with a silverback gorilla she had this big razor ready to go you know you know not in them little manscape razor she had a man's razor like a weed whacker and um, she pulled my gown down because it was open in the back you know she pulls it down and she looks and she goes oh like she was disappointed there was nothing there to shave you know like I I cost her some money out of her wallet or something. She's like, oh. And she walked away. It was funny. You had to be there. It was right up there at uh, uh, up there at Kennedy there, Jeff. Or whatever they call themselves now. Jim Beatty. I got to admit, I got a lot of, uh, a lot of nice cards from 78 and 79. Jim Eastler. Rookie card. Rick Bassetti, Gary Lavelle again, Billy Buckner, Teddy Martinez, Steve Mingori, Pedro again. So some of these cards, when I get sleeves, I'll put be sleeving them up for adding these to the auction too. Another Mick Kelleher. I think not a lot of you guys that that I don't have these are you know I'm going to add cards from the these are late seventies but still they're from the seventies and they're in decent shape. Luis Pulhos. Is that Albert's uncle? I'm trying to think. I keep forgetting who. I know he's related to Pulhos somehow. I think it's his uncle or cousin. I don't think it's his dad. Sparky Lyle. Tucker Ashford. Salvando again. Jim Dwyer. Rick Monday. Times two. There he is. Mr. Craig Nettles. Very nice. I like it. John the Count Montefusco. I want to suck your blah, 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 blah. There's the tugger. There's the baker. Red Sox team. Times two. Stan Pappy. Mickey Rivers. Man was fast. He was fast. Playing center field for the Yankees. Unfortunately, they know me very well over the, at Kennedy. Ah, and Jefferson. Yeah, Jefferson. Oh. Ouch. Yeah. Right there. I got you. Right here. Yeah. Well, at least you got lady friends. Pete Fukovich. 
I'm not allowed to have lady friends now. I'm married. Bill Allman. There's six toe again. A lot of repeats in here, but that's all right. He drove for the third time, Mike Ivey, Gary Lavelle. Joe Altabelli. He just passed away last year, didn't he? Moose Haas. Cecil Cooper. Champ Summers. Edgar Braun again. Welch. Manny Trio. And a high number card? Yeah, it's a high number card. It's 600 and something. If I can get it to go. My little pip is causing me some trouble. My son did comment, too. He likes the whole idea of the picture in picture, too. He likes that. I said, you know, it's mainly used by gamers, but, you know. I was going to do that tonight. I was going to just play a game instead of do this, but then I found this box upstairs. I'm like, you know what? I'm tired of just... There's Bobby Mercer. What a great guy. Um... If you guys get a chance, there's there's all kinds of videos on, on YouTube about the Yankees and stuff like that. There's one that they talked about Bobby Mercer and what he did and, um, you know, about his life and what he did after baseball to help, you know, players and stuff like that and families of players and um, sad, uh, the one thing that he was um, helping to fight uh, came back and took his life, cancer. But um, great guy, and they, they talk about, he was one of those guys that did a lot of things for the Yankees that kind of went unnoticed. And the way that he came into the Yankees, um, you know, being touted as, you know, the next Mickey Mantle. Can you imagine having to fill those shoes, and you're taking over in center field. Now, I get it. I get it. Mantle had to go through the same thing about DiMaggio. And Mantle and DiMaggio didn't really get along for a long time. They did later on in life, but... At first, they didn't. Mainly because Joe you know, was an old school player, and Joe um, wanted Mickey to be like him, like his generation. And Mickey was like his own generation, you know, and they did their things their way. Um, so that's the main reason why Joe and Mickey didn't get along. They did later on, uh, contrary to what a lot of people tell you, that they never got along. They did. Uh, later on in life. Um, but anyway, so Bobby Mercer got sucked into the whole thing, you know. Um, very talented ball player. Came up, struggled because of the pressures put on him to be the next mantle. Um, and then finally he was able to come back and settle down and have a great career with the Yankees. And uh, the Yankees were really great to him. The Yankees offered Bobby Mercer a chance to go into the broadcasting booth because uh, they had a new center fielder coming up and uh, they wanted to give that new guy a chance to play. Like, Bobby was only a part-time player. He was taking up a roster slot, basically. And so they offered him to be a, an announcer for the Yankees and he was a great Yankee announcer. Um, I didn't realize he had such a southern twang in his voice, but um, I think there he was from Oklahoma too, just like Mal, so that was part of the problem, you know. He came from the same state. God, the same state. Can you imagine the next poor guy that comes along after Mike Trout and he's from New Jersey and he plays for the Angels and they're like, okay, you're the next Mike Trout. The pressure? Like, dude, just because I was born in the same state as the guy doesn't mean, you know, that I am him. But anyway, ginger ale or Diet Coke tonight? Ginger ale is for when you're sick and Diet Coke. I don't like either one, to tell you the truth. My wife drinks ginger ale when she's not feeling well. Like warm ginger ale. Do I still go and buy? I will once things warm up around. We've been getting ice and snow now. It's snowing again right now. I uh, haven't been for months. I will go again. I will be making videos. Jeff has promised to come with me, so... I'm going to hold his feet to the fire on that one. And, uh, you know, if his wife or anyone wants to tag along, 
great. We could always use a videographer. Wink, wink, Jeff. You know, it's kind of hard to look at cards and be your own. Like hold your phone and look at cards. It's really hard. Bobby Mercer was supposed to be the next Mickey Mantle. Yes. Uh, yeah, but he still did very well. I mean, yeah, there was a lot of pressure put on him from outside. You know, um, it happens to everyone, though. A lot of good ball players get forced into that situation. And they, yeah, some of them it breaks. It didn't break Bobby. Bobby bounced back and had a great career. And he went to San Francisco and then the Cubs, back to the Yankees. And retired a Yankee, I believe. Um, let's see. <laughs> Trinity liked it when I grew my hair out and let his chin hairs grow. There, it's a beard. Dude, this is like the worst mine ever gets, and mine's all gray now. Uh, my wife doesn't like it. Yeah, Jeff said in a couple months when it gets better. Yeah, I understand, Jeff. No pressure. I don't want you to have pressure and be like the next, um, you know, there's no great YouTube flea marketers, so I can't. I mean, there probably is, but not in the baseball card community, so I can't even say, compare you to so-and-so. But um, no pressure there. I go, you know. Berlin has a couple. The one guy there, though, last year said he's probably going to retire, so it will be one less card vendor. But Columbus usually has a couple, and they have that oddball person who has just a binder out or a box of cards or something like that. Unfortunately, we're going to have to deal with them the way we deal with people now. With a, They're going to jack up their prices on their cards, too. We're going to walk in, it's going to be like a $3 box of 91 Fleer. Complete set, factory set, three bucks. I turned it down. The guy, I asked, first I saw the box and it was factory. And I'm like, well, how much for the box? And he's like, no. I'm like, he goes like five or six bucks. I'm like, nah, that's all right. And he goes, all right, how about three bucks? And I'm like, nah, that's okay. That's all right. And I turned them down. What can I say? You're looking forward to dry weather? What's it, raining down there? In Georgia? Wayne Finsicum. Wayne is back. Finnicum. I keep pronouncing that wrong. I'm sorry, Wayne. Finnicum. Keep adding you as moderator, Wayne. I don't know what happens. All right, so I gave you moderator again, Wayne. Guys, don't forget to link your YouTube channels so that you can, you know, get subs or sub other people you know how it goes you know I see the cat is not in here usually she's um, right here up there laying up on the top of the vending machine she's not there um, and I don't see her on any boxes no she was way way up on that box stack of box earlier today she was way up on top of there sleeping she spent like literally all day today sleeping on top of this Every other day, rain in there. Well, we still have freezing rain and snow and everything else. All right, let's finish looking at this. Uh, Jerry Royce. It's a 74. 74. Pretty nice. It's got some issues, but still a nice card. Oh, 72. Tom Phobis. Tom Phobis. Slightly off center. How about uh, Rick Auerbach? That's better centering. Uh, Don Pavle Pavletich. Pavletich. Rick Wise times two. Danny Ozark and the Philadelphia Sillies. Randy Stennett. Terry Harmon. Tommy Hutton. Dan Schatzeter, and they spelled his name right on his rookie card. Could you imagine what this would be worth if this was his error card? His rookie card? It'd be worth like a dollar or more. Ain't no one else on there worth anything. Nope. 
Rennie Stennett, Mike Caldwell, who's on the prospect card, Ernie Witt, there you go, Ernie Witt, they, the Russo brothers, Paul and Rick, the Penguin, there's Rick there, Johnny Oates, the Mad Hungarian with the freaking Fu Manchu from Fu Manchu. Tim Barr. Milkman. 77 batting leaders. Steve Dillard. Joe Ferguson with his um, Fu Manchu. That guy had st mustaches in the 70s, didn't they? It's like... They came from the 60s, and they're like, yeah, we're rebelling. We're going to all have mustaches and long hair. And, you know, they're like 60s kids now, getting older. And they're like, yeah, it was cool to have a mustache in the 60s. So I'm growing one in the 70s. Yeah, they look. the corners of these cards are pretty darn good. I mean, look at this. 78, Bob Boone. 79, Borgman. A lot of these cards are going to find their way into my auction stack, guys, just so you know that next month I'm going to start doing auctions. Roger Freed, Oscar Gamble, there's Bucky freaking Dent. They're not perfect. I mean, some will have a little fuzziness going on in the corners, but still. Stan Wall, my man Sparky. Brian Downing. Tony Scott. Times two. Larry Milburn. Mario Guerrero. Dick Drago. Larry Sorensen with one R. Bob Nepper. Larry Christensen. Terry Forrester. 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 Don Money All Star Card. Wayne Nordhagen. Nordhagen. Junior Kennedy, Senior Goodwin, Wayne Twitchell, David Lopes, John Stearns, Record Breaker, Dick Ruffin. What did he break? What record? Sets backstop. Mets backstop Stearns. Sets new loop mark in thefts. He stole bases. Wait, I thought um, Wathen had the, like, the record for most steals. Break 76 year old National League. National League. There you go. Standard for catchers. But I thought Johnny Wathen had the record for catchers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe I was wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. Won't be the last. Sarcina. I think that's going to be it for the older cards, guys, unless we've come across a strange one laying here in, a, in about. That's not good. So, so there's some uh, so some other people in here that weren't here earlier today. So um, I'll quit pan around again. So you know I've been doing all that chipper stuff um, for the last couple weeks, or, or Jeter stuff. Well, here's a bunch of chippers that I found in these boxes here. Now I didn't I didn't pull them out. I just kind of left them in there because I didn't want to break up the sets. And I took. Um, 
and added more complete sets to the stack up there. So now the whole second shelf is filled with um, Dunruss, Fleer, Upper Deck, Score, and the top rack is all Tops product. Um, there's one. What, there's, what's 8 times 8? Uh, minus 16 is 64, maybe? One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. 65, there's one more up there on the top. So it's like 65 complete sets there. Factory and hand collated. Um, the oldest one up there is from 1979. It's in the center on the top. Boom, right there. And then there's uh, 81 up there, and then there's like four from 84. And then it jumps all the way up to like 88, 89. 90, 91, 92, 93, and it keeps going up, and then there's a gap in the newer stuff um, that I don't have that I'll never be able to afford, the, uh, you know, some of those sets. But that guy who was selling the um, 44 factory sets still has his stuff up on Facebook Marketplace, but he hasn't come down. I mean, the price is good. The price is right. I just don't have the 2500 bucks to drop on it. Or if I did, I'd do it. I'd have done it. Um, so, 44 sets going back from 76 uh, all the way up to 2019. And from 86 through 2019 were all factory sealed sets. So, Good stuff. Excuse me while I take a bite of my, my dinner that's sitting here. I'll be right back. Gotta get a drink.
Yep. Nice. All right. Yes, Michael, that is a lot of cards. Thank you. I don't... Like, those are the sets, and I have a lot of wax and unopened wax that... Frankly, I don't plan on opening. Unopened stuff's going through the roof, too. I bought... Again, like two years ago, I bought... Um, some... 91, 92, I have a missed phone call from Wildwood, New Jersey, don't know, goodbye, message, okay, and the baseball team, you guys want me to go to baseball practice and record it, I can probably do that, I have to set up my GoPro. I don't want to give these guys false hope that I'm going to be playing with them next year either, though. So, yeah, at my age, I still played baseball. Um, I play in a uh, senior league. Um, not senior like you think. It's just, That's just the name of the league. Um, and it's... Uh, there are some professional, former professional baseball players in this league. Get this. Um, it's got so much pressure on it, I can't get it. Careful. Oh, because you put it in hot. Yep. And now it created its vacuum. Yep. There we go. I couldn't get it, thanks. Yep. Uh, one guy used, I know I played, I batted against this guy uh, about 10 years ago. And, um, Man, he was a lefty, and I'm a lefty, and he was just nasty, nasty, nasty. He used to pitch in the Cleveland Indians organization. I don't think, excuse me, I don't think he made it to the big leagues, but, you know, anytime you get that close, you're good. You know, you're way better than average. And, uh, yeah, he was just nasty to face, and he'd just throw the nastiest curveball, and he was fast. He was still throwing, like, 80 miles an hour. And, uh, yeah, just overpowering guys. And it was my turn to come up the bat. And I'm like, oh, God, please, God, please, God, please, God. Let him hit me. Well, it didn't happen. He threw me some nasty curveballs. And uh, it was hard not to bail out. But I hung in there because I knew it was a curveball, right? I knew he was going to throw curveballs. So I knew he was going to be able to control it pretty good because I watched him against other guys. And... Um, actually hit the ball. I hit a, a weak grounder to the infield, but I was happy I put the ball in play instead of striking out and embarrassing myself in the process. So so I've been playing with the uh, team's God for off and on for 20... Well, I joined when I was uh, 29, I think. Maybe less than that. But it was in the 25 and over league. Uh, no, it was a 29 and over league. So yeah, I joined when I was 29. And then they changed the age brackets to 25 and over, 35 and over. It was 29, 39, 49. Then they changed it to 25, 35, 45, 55. And um, and they have an 18 and over league too, where anyone can play in that. Um, anyway, um, so I've been playing off and on for like the last 20 years in this league. Fun, I found I, I've, um, you know, gotten better with. I'm like, I'm like that wine uh, that I get better with age instead of worse. Um, and these guys always call me to come play for them. Like I've been retired now for two years, and last year they put out the call. They needed help. Um, to finish out the season, like usually guys go on vacation in August and stuff like that. And, um, I'm one of the team's catchers, so 
I'm actually now, because uh, the other guy that played for them didn't play last year. Um, so now I became the, the starting catcher again. I was replaced by this guy, which was fine, because this guy had a better arm than me. And uh, so, um, because I had shoulder surgery on both my shoulders, uh, I really, hey, what's this old card doing in here? Put that in the pile over there. Um, but I, I, I kind of enjoy it, but I, the reason I stopped playing is because I wanted to spend time with my grandkids. So that's what I want to do. Because on, like when you play, when you play, you got practice on Saturday. Like right now they're doing, starting in February, they do the indoor practicing. Uh, they rent a, a, a facility and they go there and they practice. And I'm like, well, there goes half your day Saturday. And then Sunday, it's um, the game. The games go for three hours. Sometimes you have double headers, and then you don't get home till like 6 o'clock at night. And you've been up since uh, 8, you know, on your way to the games because the games start at 9 or 9.30, depending on the location. Omar Biscal. Let me check the chat here real quick because I see stuff going by. All right. You've been counting to see where you're at, Michael? Okay. Um, cool. Hey, Wicked Discounts, how you doing? Yeah, by manufacturer, yeah. Um, and then comes the second sort, which is then by year. Or now I'm kind of, I was doing it by year when I had only 600,000 cards. But now that I'm, I went from 600,000 to two and a half million plus, closing it on three million, um, in like no time. It just went by so fast. You know, when you're buying 100,000 card lots, the first one I bought was like another 600,000 card lot. I doubled my, my cards in just a snap of the fingers. So now it's do I do I sort them alphabetically, still manufacturer, but then go alphabetically like put all the Frank Thomases in the box. All like right now I'm separating Hall of Famers in boxes and fan favorites in another box. And I kind of screwed up. I didn't pull out any of the strawberries. I didn't pull out any of the Doc Goods. I know they're fan favorites of people too. So. Uh, screwed up, so I'd have to go back through all these boxes, uh, 400 plus boxes, and pull out all the strawberries and all the good ones. And, you know what I mean? If I'm going to sort alphabetically, or if I continue by year. And I also, you got 80,000? Nice. That's a start. I mean, you got to start somewhere. Some people don't have, you know, like five or 10,000. They just collect one guy, you know, and that's what they focus on. Me, I'm more like the set builder type. You saw my, my sets that I've been building. And literally, um, that's not all of them. I know I have more. Um, I just gotta get them out. But I have like eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16, Hand collate well, 16 sets, two non, two factory sets, two factory sets of 1988 tops. Here's factory and this is factory. Uh, the rest are all hand collated. Hand collated, 14 hand collated sets. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, 14. And then the next row is 89, two, three, four, five, six hand collated sets and one factory set of 89 tops. And then there's one from 91, 1991, two, three, f three hand collated from 1990, one factory 1990. No, there's another 1990. Uh, so there's one, one, two, three, four, 
hand collated one factory of 1990. Um, then factory 87 on to two hand collate 87. And there's another 1990, so there's another, I got them kind of out of sequence here. But anyway, 92, I've got three hand collated and one factory. Then I got just a bunch of singles. Uh, it starts at like 2002, so there's a gap there, um, which there's a 92 Bowman up there, 79 tops, 81 tops, 484 top sets, and then it goes 2002, 3, 6, so there's no 4 and 5, 6, 7, 8, 2009, 2, no, 1, 2010, 2011, 2 sets of 2012 tops, 2013, 2014, and then there's a gap, nothing until 2020, and then there's a 19, then there's a 1995 set here, there's another 2000 tops, 2000 set, and then there's one, two, three, four 1989 Bowman sets, a 1991 Bowman, and a 92 Bowman. I actually have a second 92 Bowman somewhere. Uh, I gotta put the Mariano back in it and put it up there. And I used to have uh, like seven 1984 top sets, but I gave, um, let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I gave away three sets for Christmas gifts to my bosses a couple years back. Um, and this past year I gave my one boss uh, a hand collated set of 83 Fleer and my other boss got the 2000 and, or um, sorry, 1994, uh, no, 1984 Fleer set because he's a Don Mattingly guy. He likes Mattingly. So I got him the Mattingly. And yeah, so football, Magic the Gathering, movie cards, basketball, and whatever I see that catches your eye. Exactly, I'm I'm the same way with um, when I go to flea markets, you know, or whatever, whatever catches my eye. When I go to a card show, I I don't go there with anything. Like a lot of guys plan out what they want to do, and that helps them. When I go to places like that, I have a budget. Just like a flea market, I got a budget, or a card show, I got a budget. And there's so many things at a card show that we all want to get. But hey, you have to stay within your budget. So my thing is, what can I get that will give me the most bang for my, my buck? And that's what I get. If it means going to the dollar box and buying a bunch of dollar cards, whatever. I'm looking for bang for my buck. Uh, other guys are the opposite. They're like, I've got... $300. What mano card can I get for 300 bucks? Or what, you know, other card can I get for 300 bucks or whatever? And they walk away with one card, but they're happy. So I'm not saying either way is better or worse. Um, that that doesn't matter. It's all your style. You know what I'm saying? Um, so. But I like, I like going to flea markets. Um, Used to go, you know, as a kid I would go. Oh, there's a score cards right there. Done Russ. Done Russ. Tops. Score. Right now, I'm like, man, I ain't got nobody to write home about here. Like, there's no Hall of Famers. There's nothing coming out of this box whatsoever. Like, that's a fan favorite. 
other than you're like, oh, well, Brian Hoblitzel was my neighbor, you know, or cousin of my neighbor, so I collect him. That doesn't make him a fan favorite, that makes him like your favorite. Brian Hoblitzel. Um, Dunners. Just coming up big, fat now. Oh, Joe Girardi. Maybe. Maybe a fan favorite somewhere. I mean, I, I like Joe as, as a manager of the Yankees, but not my favorite Yankee manager. So I don't consider him like a fan favorite just because I like him. Jose Arube is a fan favorite, or maybe of a lot of people, but I don't consider him a fan favorite. Mike Gallego could be someone's favorite. And he might have been popular in Anaheim, or not Anaheim, in Oakland, but not in Jersey. Oh. It's more fun when I'm pulling out these older cards. Here we go, here's something. Uh, triple play little scorebook. Unrubbed Dutch Dalton. I'm cheating, I'm just looking for some kind of gold in here. There's nothing. Mickey Hatcher, there you go. Struck gold. That Bert, Ho Bert Hooten, other than centering, that's a sharp card. The colors just jump out at you. It's got a centering issue. The corners are great. 1980. Oh, he's got a nice crease there. Rob Ducey. See you, Rob. You go in the crease card pile. Used to love the uh, triple play inserts. They had some nice ones over the years. Not, not outstanding, but they had some nice ones too. Ooh, there's one in plastic. Oh, it's got a gold stamp, that's why. So it's an inaugural thing. Or is this to commemorate like the Marlins? No, I don't know. I can't read it. It's got a stamp on it, foil stamp. Look, the camera. What's the camera say? Inaugural year. Colorado. Is that a Rocky symbol? Is that what that is? Rockies. I don't know. That's why it's in plastic. This card's turned backwards, and it's just the blank one. Mm hmm. Oops. Blank backs. That's four of them I found in this set. In this box. Blank backs. Now these cards won't stay on there. so I can start putting these cards back in the box. Been messing around. Go. 
in this box. This is my auction box. There we go. Again, guys, my auctions are not going to be new stuff. If you, once I start doing it, it's going to be older stuff. That's all I got. I don't. I don't have new stuff. No. Yes, what well, it is. All that new shiny stuff. I'll be putting up stuff like 81s, 82s on up. Some of the 70s, 78, 79s, 80s. couple 72s I had there, some 73s, so I have some 70s cards, but no 71s and no 70s, not that I can remember putting in there. Then. My wife just commented, and usually when she does that, I get a call, so I might get a call this weekend from Art saying, hey, I got like 30 boxes for you. You know, and I'll be like, uh, I'm, I'm just glad he didn't call because I, where am I going to put them? Where am I going to put them? You know, it would be okay if I was up and running and doing my auctions already. Then I could just pew, pew, turn them around and, and get them out the door again. And again, 83 Fleer, Buddy Bell. 81 Fleer. Yeah, 81. It's older than I thought. What? We'll put Buddy in the auction box. How's that? Dan Walters. Rest in peace, Dan. How many people are still here? We still have seven people hanging out. That's cool. Thank you again, guys, for coming down and hanging out. Watching me sort. And i got to get boring for you. I don't know. I'm trying to be more engaging with the chat. Um, and I want to I wanna do, and I sent out the invite again tonight to a couple guys to... Uh, you know, do some um, um, stream yard stuff, you know, just chit chat, banter back and forth, and, you know, maybe take turns out letting people come in and just chit chat. I don't care. You know what I mean? Carlos Perez. Roberto Hernandez. Hey, Carlos is back. Derek Bell. Andres Galarraga. Lance Johnson. David Segui. Hal Morris. That was a nice little stream. String of bazooka cards. Some upper decks. So, you know, I'm getting the feeling, guys. I'm getting the feeling that I may have sorted this box already and I put the SRT on there because I didn't separate them by manufacturer. I'm getting the feeling because I haven't found any fan favorites and I haven't found any um, Hall of Famers. Sorted, but I could have done it off camera too. That's 
kind of what I'm saying. Tops, you're going back in this, there'll be a tops box for now. Near Dunruss. For those of you that are that, that are here that weren't here earlier today when I was live, I also found Jeters in these boxes right here. So it's three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven more Jeters. Uh, those are sets, so I'm not going to break up the sets. Um, Ninety-three Pinnacle, ninety-four Bowman, Tops Bowman. I think it's Tops. I don't think it's Bowman. No, no it's the Bowman. Down. So, um, those are sets, so I'm not breaking up the sets, or it might be like a really near set missing a couple cards that I can just complete it and put it away. Um, 93 Tops Series 1, so he's only in the Series 1, so I got 1 here, 2, 3, of the 93 top series one classic best minor league uh, this says 94 tops not stadium club 93 score classic best again minor league two of those from 93 93 94 Fleer excel another one there so this the guy who had this um, this collection before I got it um, Collected a lot of cards, a lot of sets from 93, 92, 93, 94, 95. And um, that just happened to be the cheater years, we'll call it. And the chipper years, too. Chipper, Chipper's got a lot of uh, early cards in those years, too. A Rod, another one I picked up a cup. Picked out a couple of A Rod cards, and I wasn't even thinking about A Rod, so I'd have to go back to them all again and find the A Rods and the Piazzas. So there's some nice, um, good players that were coming into the league during that time as well. Who's this message from? Oh, okay. I have to plug my phone in. It's going to be dead here in a minute. Not that I'm using my phone, but. Snagged him up. All right. Um, I found two Michael Jordan cards today too, and I went in looking for Jordan cards. And I stumbled across them, so now I gotta look and type in, go back and look at all the Jordan boxes again for Jordans too. But I'm. You may not break up the sets either. Not anywhere I put that Jordan. It's in a box somewhere. 
filed away. Boom. All right. That's the Piazza Auto. I think the Jordan's in that one. It was a minor league card. I marked it, but put it in that box somewhere. And a who. Yeah. So... I'm not even going to finish this box because I know there's not going to be anything in here that's going to have any bang because I done went through it. I just never finished the sort. That's why I put SRT on it. real quick. Used to love the triple play inserts. Okay, no more comments. We'll uh, turn this this way so you guys can see what I'm, what I'm doing as I lay them down, I guess. Phil Gardner doesn't have, no, I don't think he does. I blew by him like, who's Phil Gardner? He used to play, and he's a manager, or used to manage, I don't know. Hopefully he's not related to you, because <laughs> I just disrespected him. He doesn't have, all right, so he doesn't have that wow factor. I want to be able to get up and scream and yell, oh my God, we got a hit, we got a hit. Yeah. We do, it's Steve Balboni, oh my God, we pulled a bony. Balboni. Macaroni, Balboni. Hey, there's there you go, bubblegum strawberry. There's our hit, guys. Strawberry. Jeffries, there's another hit for you, man. They're they're just popping out of the woodwork now. You just gotta look. You gotta open your eyes, and they're right there in front of you. Paul O'Neill. Sean Dunstan. Yeah, they're right there in front of me the whole time, guys. Sorry about that. I apologize for not recognizing all these hits as they just rolling right past my eyes. Frank White. Luis Gonzalez. That's his rookie card. Oh, my God. We got a rookie hit. Hensley Mullins. He was a shit back in the day. Wrong stack. Oh, nice Benito. Look at that. Very nice. Robin Ventura. Oh, this is it, guys. The Yankee sticker. That's it. Ah, look who's underneath the Yankees. Well, best place for them. And that goes to the upper deck. guys you know what if you're if you're a guy that claims to be master set builder then you got to have these or your master sets not complete right they're not numbered but you know what I mean 
Look at that. Rated rookie Jeffrey. So what? Never mind that ding on that corner. All right. And the dog ear up there. And the rounded corners and white showing in the crease. It's still a hit. 50 years from now, people will probably be tripping over themselves trying to buy this off of eBay. For like a dollar. Surprised these weren't all bricked up. Straw man again. Viola. Kenny Dykstra. And the hits just keep coming, guys. Cecil Fielder. I have to take back all the bad things I was saying about this box. Not really. Now that I see Joe Sambito, I have forgotten all about Garner. <laughs> there you go. Joe Nico's nail file fell out of the back of the card. Yeah, that could be. That, that would be neat. That would be neat to just kind of set it up with a little little piece of file in the back and as you pull the card out it goes flying like oh, what was that oh I have some ideas for cards though that's a good one that's a good one that's a good one the seeds have been planted thanks I gotta write this down because I'll forget about it hold the phone I'm at that stage where I'll forget about it guys I gotta write it down in marker on my wrist just kidding I have notams here somewhere I have sticky notes they're everywhere they're everywhere <clears throat> all right All right, can't let you know what I wrote down, guys. It's a secret. It's a secret. Now, I'll place it somewhere where I'll forget where I put it, though. Yeah. And someone will have to say something to remind me, and I'll be like, yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, here it is. Yeah, that's where I put that. Kind of like the car keys or my, my badge to get to work. I have to leave it clipped to my coat so I... Don't forget it in the morning. You know how that goes. Let's do that. Let's turn this a little bit so I'm more centered up. I don't have to be messing around with, on the edge, and I'm still on the edge. But that's all right. We can get these cards in this picture. Manny Trio. Manny, you're messing with me. Bobby Bo. Jeff McKnight. There's a rookie card of Bobby Jones. You doing Taco Bell tonight? Uh, I don't do Taco Bell if you're talking to me. Are you talking to the hobbyists? The card hobbyist. Good evening. How are you? So, people just keep coming into the stream. That's cool. You can hang out or whatever. My feet are not cold because I put socks on so I don't feel it radiating through my Crocs. Yes, I said Crocs. Uh, 
um, I was at work the other day, and it was um, Wednesday, Wednesday, middle of the week, and we got a bunch of fairly new hires. They've been there like a month or two now, and um, this one girl, one lady, female, young lady, young person, um, showed up to work, and again, she's been there for a couple months, and I found out, well, all right, yeah, I found out she was, she was a former Marine, all right, she was a Marine, it's a young girl, so she probably did, like, one tour in the Marine Corps and found out that she really didn't like it, which is fine, it's not for everyone, uh, give her props for even joining the Marine Corps, because I didn't, uh, I seen what my brother went through, and I'm like, there's no way I'm going to do that. The same crap that he did. Go through it. But anyway, she showed up for work wearing Crocs. Crocs. When you're supposed to be wearing steel toe shoes, she had Crocs on. So... Jeff's back. You back doing your back from doing your emails, Jeff? Yeah, and I'm like, gee, I wonder if her boss, because she didn't work in my area, uh, and I'm not a boss, but I have bosses. I'm like, I wonder if her boss said something to her about, like, yo, you know, don't you have boots? I mean, I know you were a Marine and all, and you probably got steel toes, but still, you got to wear steel-toed shoes, not just steel toes inside your shoes. And um, I don't know. I, I was afraid to ask that question because, you know, I didn't want to be accused of anything. Um, but, yeah. And I saw, I saw the Crocs for myself. I'm like, wow, this is not something people are making up. She actually is wearing Crocs right now. If the safety people would have seen her, though, they'd have said something to her. I'm pretty sure. And that's their job. And thank God she didn't get hurt, didn't drop anything on her feet, because, yeah, steel toes are not. Um, bones have been broken, for sure. Jeff, by the way, I saved you a box still to sort from... Um, the um, the Feasterville lot. Actually, there's like three boxes sitting back there. So it'll be waiting there for next time you come down. You'll be like, yeah, Jeff, remember you said you were gonna sort boxes? Well, here you go. Here's three of them, and you can't go home until they're done. And each one has to be categorized. And I want spreadsheets made out for each card that's in there and you'll just be here forever till springtime anyway through this once because there's no way I go this long and not find anything good I'm not talking like Jose Uribe cards I'm talking you know good cards way better than Daryl Strawberry or um, Garner you know All out of the boxes, Frank White cards. Not that it's bad, nothing or anything wrong with Frank White. Oh, we can look for, um, what you call it, I guess, how many um, Alex Madrid cards we can come across. I found a few of them. I cornered the market now on Alex Madrid's. 
<laughs> Inquiring minds want to know there, Jeff. Maybe at some point. Let's just get him out at flea markets. We'll get him out in the open air. And we'll get him hooked again. But, guys, you know, I have to say the same thing about, about John Jabs. It's done all in fun and all that. But just like you guys, Jeff has a life outside of YouTube. And we all have to respect that. I mean, I respect it because yeah, I kind of know the grind. You know, I was doing videos... I just doing a lot of lives now, but because that seems to be what people like. Not everyone. Not, like it's hard to sit and watch a two-hour video, though. You know, who wants to do that? And once it goes in video form, it's it's dead. It's you know, unless unless I spice up the the, the title and all that stuff. Um, you know. Then again, you know, I could sit, I could sit and watch um, Polecat for an hour, um, Bay Area Bugs for an hour, um, Jeff Favigno for an hour, and watch them do their gaming and stuff like that, and really enjoy it because they're funny. They they just keep you keep you going. There's nothing funny about baseball cards, you know. There's absolutely nothing funny about baseball cards. That I can think of. I mean, okay, yeah, there's the, that occasional card that does it. But, I mean, I'm talking about constantly keeps you kind of chuckling. The belly laugh, you know. There's none of that in baseball cards. That's really hard to stand up here and like be entertaining I mean I don't have all these fancy toys that Pepino man has that you know keeps you going there he's got bells and he'll get up and dance in front of you certain guys just got that certain guys just got I'm not I don't know. I mean I'm funny a little bit but I'm funnier looking than I am funny I guess we are picking up the chat there you go look at the chats going voids here Making Void's brain hurt because I got them. He's protected now by a stack of Dunruss. There he is. He's under this glass, man. This is tempered glass. It's like steel. The only way to get through this glass without shooting it with a armor piercing round would be to drop the power supply from the laptop onto the corner. It's not power supply proof. I've proven that see the power supply some of you guys have heard this that's where the power supply landed it's now my it's now my mouse pad under there is a shattered corner now you might ask yourself well, why are the tongue depressors in here well that's in case I got you know just check my tongue to see if it's coated no that's to keep the glass up so I can actually slide more cards under there I got the uh, Pascual Perez error card there right no no pitcher no position there's nothing wrong with Donnie Baseball. I just like that card and slid it up under there. There's nothing wrong with the Tom Brady. I just slid it up under there. There's nothing wrong with the Sandberg. I just slid it up there. That's the wrong Kevin Romine. That's an error card. This Sammy's missing all the gold foil printing. No name, no position, no Fleer Ultra there. Same thing with this Lance Blankenship. It's missing all the foil. This one's missing all the foil. Mo is perfectly fine. That's the Schmaltz Glavin error nothing wrong with that um, Michael Jordan nothing wrong with the Griffey Jr. just that they're under the glass and uh, yeah I'm gonna be putting more in there I kind of wanted to make a collage oh that that Ron Meredith is there because this guy he was four four or six years in the league and only has two major league baseball cards this uh, 86 Fleer and an 86 Dunruss has a couple one or one maybe minor league card that's it so probably one of the rarer players harder ones to get cards of you can buy them off eBay but 
um, until just recently when I found like a stack of eight of them or eight or ten or twelve in, in one box um, yeah I didn't have any in my collection at all I had to get them off of eBay so we can send it out and get him to autograph it TTM and it's like a five or ten year return from him TTM and two so his signature is as scarce as his cards But I appreciate your concern there, Void. Um, duly noted. Um, there's going to be other guys going under the glass, too. David Segui. So I got more bubblegum cards. All the same cards, though. There's that Dave Fleming guy. John Japs talks about him all the time. All right, let's get these tops in the box. Let's see. Donnie is good. Got you there. <laughs> You're a bit unsober. Listen to music. So email helps. Okay, I was freaking out. Hell, I only have one of them myself, and I'm a Yankees freak. Listen, up until a week ago, I didn't have any Mar Mariano Rivera's a week ago. Now what do I got? Three or four. Two complete sets. Just because I bought this lot off this guy and he had all these cards in it. And I'm like, hell yeah. I've, I've literally like tripled my Jeter, my Jeter collection just from this guy's, from this $500 lot that I bought. So I am... You know, I'm tickled pink, but it's protected under there, and it'll be good. Uh, deck, score, one for score, clear, goes there, filling up the boxes, guys. I only got like four, I bought 50 5,000 count boxes. I got like four left. I don't even know where their car, I don't even know where they went. You know, I'm like, wait, I'm almost out again. I gotta order more. My wife's gonna kill me. She's tightening the reins, you know. She's tightening the reins. She let me do that that investment. I bought that stock for five hundred bucks. And we're gonna see where that goes. That's kind of like investment to see what else I can then take the money out and play with the house once I take my initial investment back and play with the house money that's what it's all about so let's see I'm up about 48 bucks so far not nothing to brag about but I've been in it you know not even a week yet Jim Abbott, like he's a fan favorite of a lot of people. I haven't been pulling him out either. Stan Javier, there, we were talking about Bobby Mercer earlier, there he is. The picture does the light doesn't do him any justice, but, because it makes him look so faded, but great guy, great guy. Wish I had gotten to meet him. I don't know what's up with this card. Every one of this card I have, this guy's got this pink blotch around his face. You can see it over here. And it's just like every one of this guy's card. Bill Picota has got a pink. It's almost like it's a pink net hanging over his face. I don't know.
You know me, bro. If it's a lifelong Yankee, I'm always down. There you go. I don't care that I dropped so much on the new Pokemon today. How much did you spend on Pokemon? My my McDonald's won't let me purchase extra packs with my meals. I didn't even go out today because everything's icy and no. You got good Donnie's, Jeter's, Judd. Nah, see, Judge, I don't have a whole lot of Judge. I do have some Judges. I try to... Like, I go into other guys' streams with their auctions and stuff, and I'll try to pick up the Trouts, the Judges, and, you know, um, Acunas. I don't have new stuff. I don't have a whole lot of new stuff. It's whatever I bought into breaks or bought off people's auctions. That's how I'm getting my new stuff. There's no, absolutely nothing. One Walmart near Jeff and I just totally... Stop carrying baseball cards, any kind of cards. No more Pokemon, no Yo-Gi-Yo, -Oh, whatever you can call it. No Magic, no nothing. The whole card displays are torn down and they got grooming stuff there now. You know. Interesting. Yeah, it's top kids. Big shoulders on Tom. Personally, I think um, Scott over at Reindeer Studios could do a better Tom Hankey drawing, but mm, it is what it is. I can't find your email or phone number. We should talk trades. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Someone's after Top's kids. Or Sports Illustrated kids, I'm sorry. Yeah, a lot of people saw your your video there, Jeff. Yeah, Topps Kids in 93-95 was an odd bunch of sets. Glad it didn't last long. Okay, so there you go. They put cereal there, guys. Jeff, someone let the cat out of the bag. There's another secret place to buy cards. I'll have to email you. First, I have to remember where they said it was. Damn it. I hate when that happens. I know GM cereals, five of them have Pokemon now. What? Freaking 90s. You weren't here, Void, when we were talking about the, the, the 70s and all the porn stashes and how girls like hairy men back then and how their girls are different now. Ooh. Does Void have secret golf cards? Because of you, Jeff, I bought two golf cards, you know. Just because of Jeff. Well, I mean, I have more than two. But because of you, Jeff Airtime, I bought two golf cards a while back. I paid 50 cents each for these Tiger cards. I don't know what year they are for Tiger. I don't know. I just said, you know what? Probably any Tiger Woods card is going to be an okay card to have. So TT16 and TT15. Fifty cents each. I think I got them at the flea market in Berlin. Hold on, I'll be right back. I got uh, I got something else to show you, Jeff. First, I got to get out of here. I barricaded myself in.
So, <clears throat> I got this job. This came out of this this lot that I bought. I had another one, um, but it was already opened up. This one's not opened up. And this is the PGA Pro Set inaugural special inaugural set. Have you ever seen these before? Pikachu Hollow. Is that what all those special cards are in each pack? Like, are these, are these the hollows? Is that like, is that what you call a hollow? Just the shiny ones. You get one in each pack. So everything but his Yankees and his Bills. I try to sell my bills, but no one wants to buy my bills because, you know, then they have to pay my bills. My phone bill, my electric bill, my water bill, my sewer bill, my car bill, my insurance bill. No one wants my bills. I don't get it. I always get stuck with the, my bills. I even like the bills. Who likes the bills? <laughs> The Bob from what? 2001 Upper Deck. Wait, hold on. I gotta back up in the chat. I missed something. That Pikachu Hollow is 60, 75 bucks. And when I pulled one today, 2001 Upper Deck. That's that's these golf ones, right? Okay, I'm getting, I'm catching up with the chat. Oh, am I selling these? No, I bought, I bought these because of you, Jeff. Why would I sell these? I didn't buy them for Jeff. I bought them because Jeff was pushing Tiger Woods cards in one of his videos. Someone was, and I thought it was you, Jeff. I'm like, you know what? You got a point there. Tiger Woods may seem like he's a little washed up, but he's still like the GOAT. Besides Arnold and Jack and a couple of them really older, old guys, golfer guys from the early days of golf. Uh... They're overpriced. What's the so? What's the thing they give you? There's like a relic or something inside there, a special one collectible. What is there? Like a golf tee in here or something? Like a Jack Nicholas golf tee, or Arnold Palmer golf tee, and maybe a little tuft of tuft of uh, turf, you know, from the the duffers that go out. I don't know. But you can have it. I don't. You can have it, Jeff. Next time you come down, I'll just have it in the drawer here. Like I said, the other set that I got, I put in my 1,000 subscriber giveaway, but that one was already opened up. And so the thing was missing. Okay, you get, yeah, well, that's good. That's good. Pay about three bucks for, or four bucks. Or four per pack. Right. Yeah, my McDonald's won't allow you to buy extra packs with your meal. You have a, the lady, first time I went there, she's like, you know, I can only put five cards uh, per meal. I'm like, lady, isn't there just five cards in the pack? What are you talking I didn't know what she was talking about. It's my first time there. You know? And um, then I called on. So the next day I go back. And I asked her, same girl's working the window. And I said, yeah, can I buy, can I purchase extra packs of cards? And she's like, no, sir, we can't do that. We need them especially for the um, the meals, the happy meals, the kids' meals. We, we're, we're short on supply. Well, if you wouldn't sell the case before it gets there to some other freaking guy, your Uncle Bob or whoever, you know,
homeless people and ladies of the night. Uh, it's the oldest profession in the world, those ladies of the night. We should let them alone. <laughs> Nothing was mass produced and didn't have anything really great in it. The special card isn't that special. <laughs> Hell yeah, Jeff. He's got women of the night. Night walkers. All right, let's get back to this. This car going down the road. Oh, look, Daryl Strawberry in the Dodgers, his first Dodgers uniform. Very nice. That's my first upper deck card. Are you kidding me? Okay. Ramon Martinez. who is a manager she got me six more packs today very nice too many pro sets yeah I'm sure I got some pro set Spanish football cards upstairs like two sets of those small 200 or 300 card sets that came out a lot that I bought you know Well, I went over today, I got a, in this last lot from Feasterville, I got a Opeche, no, Pacific, Pacific Spanish set. First time I've seen that. Baseball cards from Pacific and Spanish, España. Ooh, logo. Ooh, look at that, snazzy binder. George Bell's telling Paul O'Neill, you heard me. I called my shot. I said single. Way out there in left center field. Yeah. See? Way, way out there. I called it. It's a single. Called the shot. Just like um, Matt Antonelli did a video the other day on his call. When he called his shot in the... Um, Who's he facing? It was a minor leaguer. <gasps> Look what we got. Is that from this kids magazine there, Jeff? Roger Salkhead? Topps Magazine. It just says Topps Magazine. Not Topps Kids, probably. But there you go. Topps Magazine card. Whoa. I almost hit it rich right there. Purina card. Oh, wait a minute. Let's do it this way. Oh, guys, I, 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 see, I see a hit. I see a hit in here, guys. We have a hit. We have a hit. All right. We'll move it to the back. We'll move it to... There you go. So it'll be the last card in the stack. We're going to move it to the back. But we have a hit. We have a hit. Whoa. I wonder who it's going to be. 
so many choices. I'm stoked because this product has so many hits. Let's do a slow reveal. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What's that? Who's that? All right, all right. It's it looks like a Seattle Mariner. Looks like a Mariner. Uh, someone named? Can we guess it yet? Who is it? Someone named Rod Roger. Roger. Yeah. Well, who's Roger? Plays for Seattle. I wonder. All right, here we go. Here we go. Anyone recognize him yet? Any guesses? Boom. Look at that. Roger. Roger, I don't know. Oh, it's Roger Salkhead. Looky there. And that was our hit of the box, guys. All right, what's Jeff on? Maybe you should sit on them for a while. Or French as well. I grew up near Canada. All Pacific is Spanish. Well, not all of them, right? They're regular Pacific that's not Spanish. If I'm correct in, in, in my ass assumption. Now, I don't know where it is. It's down here somewhere. Oh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. same place I put those Michael Jordan cards. Premier. Found some football cards today too. Over here, in the next lot. Ultra ninety-two. Ted Williams football. I'll be back in this last word, John.
Now I didn't put them back. So they're in this room somewhere. But anyway, they were Spanish. Maybe they were, I don't know, maybe they're old peachy Spanish. I don't remember now. I know they said they were Spanish. I thought it was Pacific because I think they have the crown on the front. But there's also Pacific that is not Spanish on the back. Um, if you look on eBay, you can find the ones that are specifically the specifically designated Spanish. I don't know where I put it. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Not really. Not really. But anyway, so real quick, some of you guys didn't get to see this because I didn't have them out, but I found these earlier today. Some Michael Jordan cards. Not nothing big, but this set here of 94 classic baseball cards. There was two Michael Jordans in there. I immediately put them in sleeves, top loaders, and then A-Rod. Been breaking mad Pokemon cards. Yes, you have. But I only have this old shitty 1999 webcam sitting around. Only working cam in the house since the update. Ah, gotcha. Hey, Bobby, how's it going? Bobby says you should have picked football. Uh, let's see. Um, I found this. So early on in in the um, the lot, I found two two Piazza autographs loosely in the box, and this is one of them. Uh, I gave the other one to my boss. There's one just like this, same card. And then I found this one today, as part of this complete set. Now it's not certified on the back. Piazza's from the Philly, he's a um, Philly suburb kind of native. I forget what exactly what town, whether it was Phoenixville or somewhere like that, that he grew up, but it was out on the out, just outside of Philly. And that was part of this little set of 92 classic best single A, double A, minor league. And I just wrote the uh, Piazza Auto on there so we know what's, what's important in the box. Um, found this on the 95 score, 95 score, cards 1 through 330, so it must be like series 1. I don't think it's a whole set, but these were, this is the A-Rod card that was in there. Nice young A-Rod rookie card. And then card number 1, there are other, you know, Hall of Famers in the set, but card number 1 was the Frank Thomas. So I wanted to protect it, even though now they don't sit in here like that. Can't close the box, they just sit on top. Anyway. But. And I marked on the box a rod, so I know what was in there. But, for the life of me, I can't find that box of Spanish. Um, Pacific. But anyway, unless it held a chipper card, maybe it's over in the chipper. 94 OPG, no. Upper deck, no, upper deck. 94 Pacific, regular, right? 94 Pacific Spanish, there it is, it's in the chipper pile. So, it had a chipper card in it, that's why it's in the chipper pile.
So we're going to test the theory of all Spanish, all, all the Pacific cards are in Spanish. We're about to test that theory right now. Because I thought there was a difference. But I could be wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. Won't be the last. I've said that before. All right, let's make some room here. So let's get rid of these cards, put them in their, their new home, their new boxes. Upper deck. Test the the Pacific theory of Spanish versus all Spanish. Get these out of the way. It's going to get messy here. This one just says 94 Pacific. This says 94 Pacific Spanish. Same amount of cards, right? 1 through 660. Here's the chipper on this, the non Spanish one. Or at least it says, it doesn't say Spanish on the box. Here's the chipper out of the Spanish one. Right. So now we're going to check. Flippity flip, flippity flip. You are correct. They all are in Spanish. So why did this guy mark Spanish versus non-Spanish? What a dingleberry. I stand corrected. Like I said, it's not the first time I've ever been wrong. And it won't be the last. So there you have it. I guess I could cross off that Spanish because I thought I had something special going there. I'm like, ooh, Spanish card. I can't speak it, but if someone comes to my house that speaks Spanish, reads Spanish, they can interpret it for me. Now, doesn't matter. Just doesn't matter. Making that correction right now. You, my friend. Are not special. There you go. 94 Pacific, you are just like all the rest of the Pacific cards. Alright, put these back. Oh yeah. It's getting dangerous in here. It's getting dangerous. Alright, catch up with the chat. This voids. Voids. All packs from 95 back till they th threw crap at you. Until they threw crap at you. Like monkeys. I am fine, Bobby. Thank you for asking. Ah, uh, let's see. Tomorrow, Bobby, I may uh, venture outside because I still have, or I have your, I have your packs right here. I don't, I don't know if you want your address shown or not, but there you go. So, if I venture outside tomorrow past the mailbox because I don't have a mailing thing, I'm, Kind of would be nice if I had on a scale. I could print out my own stuff, right? I don't know. Is that how it works, Jeff? See, I need your help, Jeff, in that area. If I have this scale and the, the printer, 
does it with it print out and take it right out of my account and boom I just stick it on and pop that in the mailbox and the mailman come pick it up these are questions people want to know Jeff we need to know the answers to these questions you need to do a how-to video Jeff on that I'm gonna do my how-to video tomorrow Don't show her. I didn't show her. I just I don't mind. It doesn't matter. I don't. I don't care if people send me junk mail. I get junk mail all the time anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But Bobby don't need to get swamped by junk mailers. Oh yeah, so I gotta make a note. I'm gonna forget. I'm gonna forget. Uh, tomorrow. The masses need a how-to video. On um, live streaming. Using OBS. Set up cameras. And such. There we go. Alright. So tomorrow, or tonight, I don't know. I plan to pull an all-nighter, probably doing cards and stuff. Jeffrey, time for me. Yeah, you can do it through eBay or pirate I know you said about pirate I, so what I gotta go on like a website called pirate ship and do I have to wear an eye patch when I'm when I'm doing this do I have to have a parrot like a stuffed parrot on my shoulder to qualify for any discounts to pirate ship do I have to just wear a, a, a sailor's cap or something I don't know I want discounts you know uh, and get like 20% off you can print with regular printer and paper and use tape if you wish you know okay let's talk about printers so we're all tired of having to buy the the ribbons and all this stuff right um i always run out so i went out two years ago and i bought the printers with the ink wells Gluggity gluggity glug, gluggity gluggity glug, fill them up, inkwells. And it's the biggest pain in my ass ever. Because I don't use my printer all the time. No eye patch required. Yeah, but it's so cool if you got an eye patch. You know, like Snake Plissken. I should wear the pirate stuff discount or not. Peg leg, everything. I should just cut my leg off. Like stick my leg in the snowblower and grind it off to a bloody stump and nail a wooden chair leg to my stump. That's a good idea. Pirate ship is the best. And Bobby says yes to the eye patch only. Okay, I got gotcha. you. The bloody stump will leave alone. I will save that for summertime when we're cutting the grass. We'll just cut off our foot or something. Toes. We'll start with the toes. I've been pirating movies since the era of VHS. Does that count? DVD pirates, you know. Some of the better movies you got were pirate. My son would get pirated videos, you know, on DVDs that we would watch at the house. Uh, funny stuff. You see people's heads in front of you while they're recording it from their phone or whatever the heck they're recording it on. Yeah. Now there's no movie theaters. What are we gonna do? Now we're forced to watch like what is it, Hulu or 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 um, the other ones. I don't know. Whatever other ones are on. My my son's got one on my TV, and I don't know. I don't watch movies. I don't watch movies. I watch videos and YouTube guys baseball cards. That's my world now. Bronx Boys and Aaron Pirate Ship is the best. Okay. Um, I'll have to look into that. I know I told Jeff I'd look into it. And I didn't. I just ran to the post office and dropped $77 on mailing stuff. You were right, Jeff. You were right. 
like my wife, I hate to admit when I'm wrong, but when I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Uh, let's see. I gotta check my email later on, see if, um, well, Lions Cards Game Day said he's not allowed to get mail. His mom forbade it. So he's not allowed to win stuff. Let you all know, my vision and hearing is a little wonky because my antidepressant is, is almost a hallucinogen and it's been a few days of side effects. Too many Pokemon cards. Too many Happy Meals. Making you too happy. Bobby says Jeff is always right. Ooh, Jeff. Someone else is in your wife's corner now, too. They're ganging up on you. My wife's not around. So. I'm right. Right now. When she's around, I'm wrong. It's just the way it works. You're right. You're right. You guys are right. What else is going on around here? I really don't want to even finish this box on camera because it's sucking. But we'll go through it. Hey, the chicken. Zoom, flying through the air. The chicken. Upper deck. Dunrose. Tops. Dunrose. Tops. Fernando. Uh, what's that scorecard doing there? Now you're screwing up my rhythm. And upper deck. Well, that just blew it all out. Blew it all out of sequence now. Yeah, so my, my Jeter collection has gone through the roof these last couple of weeks. That's great. That's great. And... Um, my chipper collection has skyrocketed. Still got a long way to go to catch up to um, the number one um, Chipper Jones fan. And that's Aaron's um, you know Aaron. The guy who has the closet full of Chipper Jones cards autographs out the wazoo. Yeah, that guy. The guy with the card closet full of autographs. I watched his 12 days of Chipper. It was crazy. He just kept pulling them out like, dude, you cornered the market on Chipper Jones autograph. I thought I was special. I had one Chipper Jones autograph. I'm like, damn, I got a Chipper Jones autograph. Now I feel like, you know, we just took my thingy and jammed it in the dirt real hard and that was it. Now my thingy's broke. Is what it is. Upper deck. Press clear. We put upper decks in the. What's going on here? Oh, there's all upper deck. Yes, they are. Okay. Clear screwing me up. There we go. Ozzy Gim. Bobby has spoken, and her word is the law, and the law shall be obeyed. I'm sorting by um, manufacturer, let's call it that one.
at many of these. These are the mail ins for the 87 set. Don't see a whole lot of the 87, I see a lot of the other ones, mainly because I picked up the other ones when they were out there doing the mail ins. Bazooka Paul Gibson. Chat Zedder spelled correctly. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's because um, Adam's card closet got all those Chipper Jones autographs in his PC. And I thought I was, like, doing okay with just one. And then he started just whipping them out. Excuse me while I whip this out. Chipper autograph. Oh, you didn't like that one? Ching chipper autograph. Wait, I got another one for you. Chipper autograph. And then my thingy just went right in the dirt, and that was the end of it. It's all good. Thank goodness he spends all his money on chipper autographs. It doesn't go after the Yankee cards. Right, Floyd? He leaves the Yankees alone. Kitty underrated. Hey, E.L. Brown, how's it going? What's Nessa? Got the hit of the box. Here it is. You guys ready for this? You want the slow reveal or just the quick down and dirty? First one gets the vote. Slow reveal or the down and dirty? All right. I'll make that decision for you. It's the down and dirty. Wham! Look at that. Got your reference, classic movie, could never be made nowadays. Uh, okay, is that a Void reference? I, m I missed it. I don't watch a whole lot of movies. Look at that Fleer card. So shiny, so shiny on the back. Yeah. You're not a master card set builder unless you have the complete set of these. Don't let them fool you. Hey, a minor league card. What the? What? A Tom Nevers? Where's Craig B when you need him? He's a Neverholic, man. Um, nice Sean Dunstan for your ultra.
to be McDowell. Woo, little chin music. Or was it behind him? It looks like it might have been behind him. Oh, Blazing Saddles. Okay, gotcha. Blazing Saddles was great. Great movie. Um, friend of mine. Um, I've known him for, 12, for 13 years now. Went to Air Force together. And um, he's a um, black guy. African American, what do you want to call him? Afro American. And um, I told him about Blazing Saddles. And he had never seen it before. I'm like, dude, it's classic. You gotta watch it. You gotta watch it. And this guy has a great sense of humor. And he loved it. He watched it and he loved it. He got such a thrill out of it. Because you gotta know, take it into context. You know what I mean? It's not meant to be racist totally. Maybe, obviously nowadays it's taken as being racist. I mean, even comedians, stand-up comedians, back in the day, like, weren't they trying to say that um, Gallagher was racist because he was smashing watermelons? Like, what? Smashing watermelons doesn't mean you're racist. What the hell is that all about? Where did that come from? That came so from so far out of left field. Like, wow. Voight says, remember, he can't hear me. So, that's all right. Read my lips. Did you hear me now? Wait a minute. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Oh, that guy got fired from his commercials. He went over to the competitor. Because that's all he said. He had one line. Can you hear me now? Sorry to make you have to type to me, but it was a long night day, a long day night. Richard Pryor wrote most of this screenplay of Blazing Saddles. Of course, he's the greatest you know, one of the greatest comedians ever, right? So, Mel Brooks, I mean, just great. Blazing Saddles was great. But, like you said, nowadays, you're racist if you even talk about it or you watch it or whatever. So. Ah, it's not the error. That would have been the highlight of the box if it would have been the error. That has to be white letters. Dang it. All right. Well, we keep moving. Keep moving. Surprised these FLIR cards aren't stuck to each other, you know, because these are notorious for bricking. Bob Shirley, one of the greatest Yankees never. for tomorrow but I gotta check something else all right I need you Tom there we go There, speaking about Rigetti, there he is, Rags. No, it's not, Frank. I can sh I'll can. put it on StreamYard right now. Hey, guys, I want to switch over to, uh, to uh, StreamYards. And Frank wants to check it out 
and get his first introduction to the use of it and how it works and all this good stuff. So if you don't mind, I'm going to shut down the stream. I'm going to fire it right back up. But we're going to use StreamYards through YouTube, which means we're not going to have the little picture in picture. We're just going to have me, Frank, and one other because I got the basic. I don't pay for the, the expensive one. I'm more of it's free, it's for me kind of guy. You know what I mean? Save my money for cards kind of thing. So we're going to shut it down here. We're going to fire back up on Steam Yards. And so we can get another person in here. That'll be fine too. Again, we're up to three people. Yep, that McDonald's Pikachu and the promo box cards have paid for my entire output of cash on Pokemon today. Nice, congratulations. I got this today, Boyd. Hold on real quick. Well, not today, yesterday. A black box. Is that like a special box? I don't know. Maybe you know the secret to the Pokemon code. I don't know. Black box, man. Charizards. Yeah, we got a. What? No, we got a. We got a Charmander. Anyway. All right, guys. Let me shut down. I'm gonna fire up Steam Yards. All right, we're almost three hours on this anyway. But Frank wants to give it a shot, and I want to obviously work with him and help him uh, work out any bugs. So when he goes live, he'll understand how Steam Yards works, and we can get live content from our buddy Frank up in North Jersey. Maybe get to hear from the the card father himself in real time. There are four boxes of cards, all are random, but the toys are determined by the box number. If you get the stickers, we'll hold on to them, not like me. Okay, I will do that. All right, we're going to shut it down. So Void um, says he can't hear very well, so I'm going to type it in here real quick just for Void. Oh, we've got a warning from Microsoft. stickers hold on to them not like me okay I'll remember that all right guys Frank coming back at you wait for me to fire up steam yards I gotta shut down OBS because they, they conflict with each other guys we'll see you back here in a couple minutes all right peace boomslang signing out sit on them we'll do we'll do ending stream now guys <laughs>